I've just watched a wrestling show where a wrestler was running from a f***ing doll, and I don't feel very proud. Honestly, I'm a bit ashamed. What am I doing with my life? And you know what? F*** Lily. Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Greatness of Raw. Not a lot of greatness, as always, but I gotta say the overall show was actually better than for the past four weeks, which is not a big accomplishment, you know, watching Pain Dry is more entertaining than Raw, but it was a bit better, although the ending is just confusing, it was horrible, cringy, the only positive thing I gotta say about this, the production was amazing, as always, with the WWE. They could record someone cleaning a shit stain from a toilet and still somehow make it look amazing. And people, in case you don't follow me on Twitter, Ryback's motivational speeches <laughs> are working. I boosted my testosterone levels by watching Ryback's motivational TikTok videos. Thank you, Ryback. And as you can see, the results are just mind-blowing. I mean, I was surprised as well, man, but I look like a completely different person. You know, I also have an honest response to Ryback. It's gonna be a bit of a different video. It's probably gonna be on my Reddit video, but this time it's gonna be a bit different. Okay, it's time to talk about Raw. I'm honestly very tired. I'm not in the best mood, but I'll talk about the highlights. I'm not gonna digest this show from point A to point B. I, I really don't feel like doing that. And I'm sure you don't want Raw to be recapped anyway. Surprisingly, I actually did enjoy the opening segment with the tag teams. We got a number one contenders tag team battle royal. Lindsay Dorado was all by himself. But before the match starts, we saw AJ and Amis interrupting and they basically roasted every single tag team. You know, pretty typical stuff. The highlight of this segment was really giving some advice to AJ Styles on how not to speak. We also saw The Miz and John Morrison. The Miz cannot compete, but John Morrison is gonna be there all by himself. That was also pretty funny. We didn't get anything that special, but for some reason, I thought this was a nice, cute little opening to Monday. Day Night Raw and kinda got me excited for the match and the match itself was actually pretty nice as well, you know, Battle Royals for the most part are really really boring. This one was pretty okay-ish. Obviously that was the best spot, John Morrison just always makes these kind of matches special, same goes for Kofi Kingston. I'm not sure about the result though, the Viking Raiders took the W, AJ and Amos vs the Viking Raiders doesn't really excite me that much, you know. I'm sure the match itself is gonna be pretty entertaining, but I'm sure we all wanna see AJ and Amos vs Riddle and Randy Orton hopefully at SummerSlam. Evolution is happening next week and uh... I don't know, man. It's probably just a prank. WWE are messing with us. Something weird is gonna happen and WWE are gonna continue the gimmick they did in 2016. Which I'm all for. It's just that we don't have a crowd, so what's the point? Flair is asking for matches again, but this time Sonya Deville is actually not giving in. Adam Pearce and Sonya Deville are on the same page and they announced a tag team match. Flair and Ripley vs Cross and uh, a partner of her choosing. Don't get fooled, I don't give a shit. It's one of the worst things happening in the WWE right now. I hate the storyline. This is definitely the definition of a filler rivalry, Elias versus Jackson Riker. Riker looking like a redneck version of Stifler. He attacked Elias from behind, we got a match, and of course, Elias did the exact same thing he did last week. He just left. He doesn't care. You know what? I believe this match should main event SummerSlam. The contract signing was pretty underwhelming in my opinion, although we got some answers, so it achieved something. Basically, this is the last time Drew McIntyre is going to challenge Bobby Lashley for the championship, and also Drew McIntyre asks for a hell in a cell match, so that's all good. Drew McIntyre is going to be in a Hell in a Cell match for the second year in a row, and I'm sure this match is gonna be entertaining and something tells me Drew McIntyre is taking that championship back, uh, but I wouldn't go that way. I believe Bobby Lashley should retain the championship because a title change this time needs to happen in front of a crowd. We can't waste these moments anymore. Sheamus is looking all beautiful. We saw a number one contenders match, Humberto vs Ricochet. Sheamus believes they don't deserve the match, you know, a typical heel thing. It's weird because if this match, or at least this spot right here happened on every any other promotion, this would be possibly the spot of the year, right? But it's just because it's Monday Night Raw, 
It just doesn't feel as special and I don't know why. Maybe it's the production, maybe it, it just feels overproduced. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't feel special. The highlight of this was Sheamus talking about how he was the most attractive dude in the WWE and look at what they did to him. But of course, after this amazing spot, we got a count out so nobody won the match. Sheamus dodged a bullet. The whole gimmick is that nobody deserves a title shot at Sheamus' uh, United States Championship. And tonight they proved it. They don't deserve the shot. Nobody won. It was interesting seeing MVP talking to Kofi Kingston, basically saying that I respect you and you winning the championship is one of the best moments in WWE history. I really, really liked it and it was special because uh, I saw you celebrating with your kids. You know, basically praising Kofi Kingston. But then he criticized Kofi by saying that you're getting too comfortable, you're spending way too much time, you know, caring about your friends and stuff. Unlike Bobby Lashley who only cares about the championship. And women. Kofi stops him and says, I don't want advice from you. Typical heel and face interaction, but honestly, I would love to see Kofi Kingston in the Hurt Business. I know it's not gonna happen, the New Day are not gonna uh, join the Hurt Business, but let's be fair, the New Day are not that entertaining anymore. Let's be fair, nobody cares at this point, as good as they are. I would love to see the New Day turning heel and finally actually going with the gimmick that was the original plan. That's how it would basically look. They don't need to betray Big E or one another, just try something new and after a couple of years you can reunite the New Day and it's all good. We need something different at this point and I'm sure this would work. You know what's good? We finally saw Jeff Hardy in action and we also saw Jeff Hardy taking that W. I really, really appreciate that. Hopefully WWE are preparing Jeff Hardy for that No More Words theme song return once the crowds are back because Jeff Hardy promised us that, so hopefully we're getting it and I cannot wait. And like I've said, Jeff finally won a match and that makes me feel really, 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 really good. All the stuff with Randy Orton at Matt Riddle is just always gold, you know. Randy Orton is also wearing an RK Bro hoodie, so... That's pretty nice. And while we've seen all that stuff already, for some reason, it's still pretty charming. It does have that potential to be the next Daniel Bryan and Kane, but we need crowds, we need the laughs, you know? And that's the type of babyface Randy Orton needs to be. He's hanging out with the good guys, but he's not necessarily a very nice person. That's the way you need to book Randy Orton as a heel. We saw Ripley and Charlotte versus Nikki Cross and Asuka and of course as expected Rhea Ripley and Charlotte Flair cannot coexist. We saw natural selection and Nikki Cross takes advantage. Does anybody care about this rivalry? By the way Randy Orton wasn't sure if he's going to be at ringside for Kofi Kingston versus Riddle so we saw the match and of course Randy Orton was. He attacked Xavier Woods. The match was actually pretty entertaining, you know. It's not necessarily about the moves that are happening in the ring. It's all about the story and the relationship between Randy Orton and Matt Riddle and also Matt Riddle's uh, progression because, you know, he's acting more ruthless and that's obviously because he's being influenced by Randy Orton but he still lost the match and Randy Orton was very disappointed. The Riddle looked like a kid who just couldn't make his father proud. I love this and I'm pretty sure this is gonna fly with the live audiences. And of course this whole Alexa playground, oh man, we saw Shayna Baszler and Alexa wants Shayna Baszler to apologize to a doll. She wants Shayna Baszler to apologize to a f***ing doll. I know why it makes sense, I understand that, but I'm a grown man who just watched a segment where a wrestler dressed as a little girl asked another wrestler to apologize to a f doll. I'm not very proud of that. You know, I watched this episode by myself, so I'm okay. I didn't have any uncomfortable moments. But if I watched this episode in front of more than two people, I don't know if I would be standing right here.
you know? She sarcastically apologized and attacked the doll. Oh my god, I hope... I hope the doll is okay. Oh my god. And of course, Alexa started using her dark powers. Fire everywhere. Which honestly looked quite impressive. AEW should take notes. It's all just stupid, we saw lights flickering backstage, and of course that is gonna keep you safe from a doll that basically had explosions in the whole arena. <laughs> she started seeing doll in the mirror, but once she, you know, turned around, the doll wasn't there, and she started going insane, she destroyed the mirror, and basically the show ended with lights going out and Shina Baszler screaming. The production value was good, I'll give you that, you know, somehow they made it kinda bearable, but the whole, the whole thing is just stupid, and I honestly don't think that having Alexa Bliss as the new Fiend is a good idea, it's really not working. It's been going on for way too long, and I still can't tell you a single highlight that was truly very good. And that was your Raw. So sorry if this video was a bit of a lackluster, I know. I feel tired, my English barely works. The positive thing is we only gotta suffer for one more month and then the crowds are back, uh, we'll enjoy that for like a couple of weeks and then Raw starts to suck again. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah.